Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by Titan FC heavyweight Scott Barrett. Scott, how are you? I'm great, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Scott, you got a fight coming up October 31st at Titan FC 31. Since we're a week out from the fight, is all the hard training done? Uh, yes, sir. I just got a few more of some technical stuff going on, but yeah, pretty much all the hard work's behind me now. Now, your original opponent was supposed to be Wes Combs, but now you're going to be taking on Kenny Gardner. So the guys are pretty much the same style. They're both strikers. They both like to go for the knockout. Did training have to change at all? Uh, not really. Um, I pretty much kept the same thing in, in place. Like you said, they're both, they love to stand up and bang. So, you know, that's just my, that's what I've been working on since I started this. You know, working on my stand-up movement and throwing some bombs back. On October 31st, you're going to be taking on Kenny Gardner. What are your thoughts about him as an opponent? And he's, he's great. He's well-rounded. I mean, I've watched his fights. You know, he's won some fights by knockout, a lot of fights by knockout. Mm-hmm. He's also won some decisions, and he's even got some submissions in there. So he's a well-rounded fighter. And he's tough. He's an ATT guy, so he knows a lot. He's He's been around the game for a long time. Originally, you were supposed to face Wes Combs at this event, but... He dropped out due to injury, and Kenny Gardner replaced him. Now, personally, I think that Kenny Gardner is a better fighter, and this is a better uh, test for you. Would you agree? Is Gardner the better opponent than Combs? I think, you know, Kenny, I know some of them are telling me Kenny was on a rough, a rough run, but, man, you got to look at what he's accomplished in his career with being an M1 champion for a long time, and he's, he's, a, he's beat some great opponents. You train with Black Zillions. He trains with American Top Team. He was the M1 champion during the same time that you were a free agent and struggling to find fights. So I'm just curious, has Kenny Gardner ever been on your radar, or is he now only on your radar because you're going to be fighting him on Halloween night? Well, I mean, I've known of Kenny for a long time. Like I watched some of his fights with, uh, with Pat Bennett, and then I've watched him fight uh, some of the M1 fights, and I know that he actually took a he had a really close fight, and then he got caught at the end of the fight with Damien Grabowski, and I was interested in that fight. And um, and I've, I've watched him. I just I always thought he was under contract with M1, and that's what he was fighting with. So I didn't really look at fighting him anytime soon, and then it just kind of happened the way it did. So I just know that I'm ready. I put in a you know a great camp. All my coaches have been really helpful. My training partners have been there for me every day. Um, my strength conditioning coach. I just feel I've never felt this good walking into a fight. Mm. What do you think Kenny Gardner's camp is telling him to do against you in this fight? I'm not sure. You know, just, I know I fought some of his teammates. I fought Carmelo Marrera and Derek Maymond, you know. So, I mean, I'm sure they're giving him pointers and telling him what he needs to do and what he needs to look out for. But I'm not real sure. His game plan is going to be. I mean, I know he's going to try to hit me hard. And I assume he wouldn't mind trying to be on top instead of being on bottom if he goes to the ground. Now, is this going to be your second, or is it going to be your third fight since you joined Black Zillions? This is, I think this will be my fourth fight. Okay. I had one as soon as I moved here, and then I had another one that I had the, the World Series fight, so this was my fourth one, yeah. This fight against Kenny Gardner will be your third fight since 2013. Why haven't you been that active? Why has it been so long in between fights? Has there been injuries involved? Is it just trouble finding opponents? Is it a money situation where promoters just aren't paying enough to make it worth your while to take a fight? What exactly has caused this layoff and the inactivity you've had? Just trying to find fights, man. I've been wanting to fight. I've been trying to get in the cage. and It's just it hasn't worked out for me, man. But um, signing with Titan was huge for me. Uh, Jeff and all those guys, you know, they want to put on a lot of fights. And uh, hopefully I can um, get some fights back to back and maybe... You know, keep going where I was going before all this happened. Mm-hmm. Scott, what exactly happened with World Series of Fighting? Because obviously you had that fight with Derek Maiman, which was a really good fight. Then all of a sudden, you're released and you've signed with Titans. So what exactly happened with World Series of Fighting? Did they flat out release you? Did they just cut you after that fight? Did you just have a one-fight deal and you fulfilled that when you fought Maimon and then you just parted ways and became a free agent? What exactly happened with World Series of Fighting and why aren't you fighting for them anymore? Well, I signed with them and that was my first fight and I was expecting to fight for them. I think I had a four or five fight deal with them. I was expecting to fight a lot, but they didn't have as many shows as I think that they wanted to and I had a release of my contract based on 
an active month. So when it came down to it, there was nothing they could do for me because I mean, man, it just it just it just didn't pan out the way that I wanted it to. Or World Series, so they let me go. And Titan was waiting, and I was I'm really excited to be with Titan. I mean, their company is up and coming, and it's going to be huge. Now, the big shows that you fought for over the course of your career have been Bellator and World Series of Fighting. Now, I still think that you beat Damian Grabowski. I still think that you should have won that fight, but, you know, it's in the past. Let's not dwell on it. But I still think you should have won that fight and continued on with Bellator. And then this deal with World Series of Fighting, they left you on the shelf for a little while. They finally get you a fight. It's against Derek Maiman. It's a really good fight. But then, after that fight, they released you. So, I'm just curious, why haven't you been able to latch on to a big promotion? I, I don't know. I, I've tried, like, the same thing with Bellator. I tried to stay with them. I was happy there. and They just couldn't find me fights. And I know what happens to a lot of guys, but I'm, I want to be active. I want to fight three or four times a year if possible. Like, I mean, that's it's what I do. I mean, we don't get paid a ton of money, so I mean, we need to keep fighting and stay, stay with you know, food on the table. Mm-hmm. With this inactivity you've had recently, how do you put food on the table, and how do you pay your bills if it's not through fighting? Um, just I, I train a few people here and there, you know, odds and end jobs, just little things like that. I'm you know helping out with some of the other black zillions and stuff like that. Just uh, it's it's I've been very blessed with everything going on, so been able to be pretty comfortable. Now you leave World Series of Fighting and then you sign with Titan. So I'm just curious, the in between time, how long is it between when World Series of Fighting released you to Titan signing you? Well, it was actually before I was released. I was <laughs> I was bothering Jeff pretty bad about it because I knew that, you know, what date I would be released from from World Series and they had nothing for me, so there was no way that I was staying. And um, before that even happened, I was I was on Jeff and I was ready to go, knowing what was going to happen. And uh, you know, just looking at what he was doing with Titan since he purchased it, I was I was super excited. So I, I was I was bugging the crap out of him, <laughs> just hoping that uh, he would give me a chance. What exactly was the reason you decided to sign with Titan? Is it because of their business model and Jeff Aronson's vision of building guys up and getting them into the UFC? Was it because of their finishing bonus? Because you're a finisher. 13 out of your 15 wins have come via stoppage, 12 by KO or TKO, and 1 via submission. So you're a finisher, no doubt about that. So I'm sure $1,000 in your pocket uh, would be would be a thing to to lure you in and and get you to sign. But was it the the finishing bonus? Was it the fact that they're on CBS Sports Network, a great channel? You could get a lot of exposure. What exactly led you to sign with Titan? I was just I saw what he was doing with it, and now I just wanted to be a part of it any way I could. Like I, I mean, just the just just the one or two shows that I saw beforehand. I knew it was going to be huge, and I think it's growing every every time they put on a show. You know, the guys he's letting fight, the way he takes care of the fighters, and he puts the fighters and the fans first. Like, it's just a great organization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've fought for big shows. You've fought against good competition. You have some good wins under your belt. You have a great record. You're a heavyweight. You train with a great gym. You, you have a great team behind you in Black Zillions. But for whatever reason... You're still under the radar, in my opinion. Now, do you think that you're flying under the radar, and what are some reasons on why you're flying under the radar, if you think that way? Um, I feel like a lot of the fighters know who I am, and you know, a lot of the guys, I've obviously had some issues with guys not wanting to fight me in the past, but at the same time, I haven't had the mainstream media that I would like, and you know, that's what I'm hoping is going to happen with Titan and with Alchemist, and you know, I just want to, I want to brand myself, you know, but not just as a person, but as a winner. Like, I want to get in there, I want to put the work in, I want to make people like me because they want to watch me fight. I know people think, oh, it's a heavyweight, and he's a wrestler, he's going to lay and pray, but if you look at my record, I'm not that way. If I, I mean, I want to finish the fight. I don't want to fight that long. I want to finish the fight in two minutes if I can. Like, I'm not going to get in there and, and brawl if I don't have to, but, I mean, I'm willing to. I've done it before. I just, I want people to, I want people to watch my fights. When lose or draw, people be like, man, you know, Scott Baird's fighting now. I'll turn that fight on and watch it. Titan FC 32 is going to feature the first ever Titan FC heavyweight championship. The fight is going to be between Dave Herman and John Madsen. Originally, it was supposed to be Walt Harris, but Walt Harris got re-signed to the UFC. 
Now, obviously, right now, you're not in a position to ask for a title shot, but are you a little bit disappointed that they didn't hold off on making a title fight until after the fight with you against Kenny Gardner? Because obviously, Kenny Gardner is a former champion. He's been around for a while. This is a really fun fight between you two guys. Are you a little bit disappointed? I know you're not really in a position to ask for a title shot, but are you at all disappointed that they didn't treat this fight between you and Kenny Gardner as a number one contender fight and the winner of this fight would fight Herman at Titan FC 32? Or are you okay with this whole situation? Um, Not really. I mean, I haven't even gotten a fight for the company yet, so I'm right. not, you know, I don't want to, be asking for things I don't deserve. You know, I want to put in my work. I want to get my wins, and then when it's my time, my time, I'm sure that Jeff will be willing to throw me in there. I just I have to work. I mean, I have. A, I mean, I've lost my last fight. You know, I have a tough. I have a tough opponent ahead of me next week, and you know, Dave's fighting um, John Madsen, which is going to be a great fight. That's going to be in Georgia. So you know, I, I mean, I would love to have the winner of that fight, but I, I got to put in the work to get there. Now, this fight is going to be taking place on Halloween night, so I thought I'd change gears a little bit and throw you some Halloween questions, change it up a little bit, get away from the the old, boring, same old, same old fight questions and change it up and ask you some Halloween questions. The first one is, what's your favorite Halloween costume? When you were a kid growing up, what was your favorite thing to go as? Give us all the details. How old were you, and why were you that costume? Man, anything superhero. The Hulk, Superman, Spider-Man, anything. I was all about it. Okay, okay. And what's your favorite candy? <laughs> anything with peanut butter in it. <laughs> okay, okay. Obviously, we hear about all these horror stories about people putting razor blades and rusty nails and all kinds of crazy stuff in candy. There's a lot of sick people out there, but we've heard all these stories about these people doing this kind of stuff. Did you ever get any of that? I never got any of that, but but I've heard all these stories. Have you ever gotten anything like that? Did you ever get anything crazy like that? Did you ever get any of that homemade stuff? No, I never. I mean, I lived in a small community in North Georgia. Everybody was really close. Everybody knows everybody. You know, the biggest thing is we would get, sometimes we would get apples or oranges as Halloween candy, and I always got upset about that. <laughs> okay. But okay. that was about the worst it got. Okay. What's the strangest thing you ever got? I mean, I know you just said fruit, but is there anything else? When you were growing up, did you get anything? Supplies. I guess the same with the, you know, with the paper and the pens and the rulers. I've, I've gotten school supplies before when I was younger, and I always thought that was a little bit different. Oh, Okay. Okay. Now, every year, there's that one guy who puts the big bowl of candy with the little sign that says, please take one. There's always that person that can't be bothered, whether it's because they're not home or they don't want to deal with the kids. There's always that person who puts that big bowl out there. Now, I'm just curious, and you're not on trial or anything, so you can be honest. When you saw that, when you were a kid growing up and you were trick-or-treating, when you saw the please take one, did you just take one or did you take the whole bowl? I wouldn't take the whole bowl, but I might get two. Okay, okay. Now, were you a bad kid? Did you ever go out on Devil's Night? Did you ever egg anyone's house? Did you ever toilet paper a house? Did you ever smash a pumpkin? Did you ever do anything crazy, or were you, or were you uh, no, not into like that? Like I said, it was a small community. Everybody knew everybody. If you did something wrong, my mom and dad would know about it before I even got home. So I had to be real careful. You know, my parents were, they were great parents. I had an older brother. Always kept an eye on me, so I mean, I never really got in a lot of trouble. But like I said, if I ever did anything crazy, my parents knew about it before I even got home. No, oh, I see, I see. Now on October thirty first, uh, Titan FC thirty one. When you're making your walkout, will you be in costume, or is that not your style? Man, it's not my style. I thought about it. I had some ideas, but uh, I decided just to you know make it a business trip. You know, go in there and do what I need to do and get home. Oh, I see, I see. Scott, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Man, I just want everyone to watch the fight. It's going to be great. You know, the whole car is awesome, but I, I'm, I want everyone to try to check, catch my fight. I want to take these sports, um, Himes Motors. Those guys are really helping me out with um, with transportation, and then Beast has always helped me out with uh, all my supplement needs. Scott, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck. October 31st at Titan FC 31 against Kenny Gardner. All right, brother. I appreciate it.